Hymn number 563. Hymn number 563. Count your blessings. <laughs> This will be our offertory hymn. Years, 
to remind you that uh, today, right after the service, uh, Brother Paul is going to have an offering played on the resource table, and we are going to ask you guys to uh, help us with the Ministerial Alliance Fund. Uh, right after service, I'll be going over there, and we're, we're going to be taping a Ministerial Alliance Thanksgiving service, which will be broadcast on Channel 6 and uh, Facebook and uh, all of the media outlets at 6 o'clock tonight. So if you want to uh, tune into that, you certainly can do so. Uh, but uh, the offering that we're going to be taking today, it, it helps those that need medication in our city that cannot afford that. It helps with groceries. It helps with utilities. And uh, basically, it helps those that are going through a very, very difficult time right now. And so that money goes, whatever you give, goes right back into the community. So right after the service, we're, we'll do it a little bit different. Uh, right now will be our tithes and our offerings. And right after the service on the resource table, we will have that offering for the Ministerial Alliance. Or does that make sense to you this morning? But all the money that we collect for that goes for those that absolutely need it. And can I tell you, there are those that are going through a very, very challenging time right now. So uh, just be mindful of that and uh, let's, uh, let's do our part. All right. Father, we thank you for your, for your goodness. And Father, we just thank God that we're here today. And Lord, I know that uh, uh, sickness is raging our country. Not only just a physical sickness, but Lord, there is a spiritual sickness that's crept into our land as well. But Father, I pray that you would be with our hearts this morning. And Father, I pray that uh, for the remainder of this service that we will be challenged. And Father, that we will do exactly what uh, whatever you'd bid us to do. Father, be with the rest of the song service, the special. And Father, I pray that you anoint the preaching from on high. And thank you, Lord, for these that give liberally give generously, give from the abundance of their heart. I pray it in Jesus' name. Amen. I can assure you that uh, you don't want to fall asleep 
during the preaching service because there's a prop up here that uh, I just noticed a minute ago and <clears throat> beware. Hymn number 371. Hymn number 371. Thank you for this time to sing praises unto you. Lord, this time to study in your word. <coughs> Lord, to, to be convicted. Lord, to just have time to fellowship with you. Lord, we'd ask now that you just be with Miss Judy as she comes. <coughs> and sings from her heart what you have brought to her, Lord. Just help us to have open ears for the message that's in these words. Lord, just give Miss Judy a peace. Lord, be with our pastor. <coughs> comes to open your word, Lord, Lord, to bring what you've been talking to him about these last few days, these last few weeks, Lord, or just pray that you just hide him behind the cross, Lord, we hear every precious word from your good book, we just thank you again for all you do with those that are unable to be with us today. In your name I pray. Amen. Jesus. 
This morning I was um, started out the week going to just certainly have some Thanksgiving thoughts, but um, even the things that we are experiencing right now, the Lord just seemed to change my mind, and I always want to be obedient to what the Lord would want us to hear, not with what maybe. 
I would want to preach. So, we have heard the expression, work smarter, not harder. We've all heard that before. Now, certainly that applies to our physical work, but I'm not so sure there's not a spiritual application in that as well. Um, what we hope that we will show you this morning is how we can be more grounded and settled in our spiritual life. And I can tell you this, would you just get this from the very outset? No matter if there is a virus raging the land, it, we still need to be sharp spiritually. Now I realize that a lot of decisions that's been made has affected us in our spiritual uh, walk with God. Uh, but I can tell you this, it should not be. You see, as a Christian, we are to be on top of our game every day. Now I realize health and circumstances has a way of affecting that. But nevertheless... As Judy sang just a few moments ago, the reason why we can do what we do is because of the blood of Jesus washes our sins away. It's not because of any physical effort that in which we could do, but it's simply because of what Christ can do. Now, let me just brag on you just a little bit. I just want to compliment you. You see, without you knowing it, you help others by how you handle your hardships and how you handle your disappointments. And can I tell you, there is not a one of us in this room that's not been affected some way this year. Whether it's your own personal illness, or whether you see someone else that is going through a very difficult time. But I just want to thank you for hanging in there each and every week. And that's to all of you. Thank you for hanging in there and being consistent. Now, you may not be familiar with a man by the name of John Berryman. He was an accomplished poet, and he also was a professor. In 1965, he won the prestigious Pulitzer Prize for his work called 77 Dream Songs. He had it all. But something occurred in 1972 that would shatter his life and shatter people who knew him. You see, in 1972, he walked across the bridge in Minnesota. He waved at a, at a stranger that he did not know. And then he leaped to his death. At age 55, he had written these words. I still feel rotten about myself. One of his poems, he wrote this line. After all that has been said... And all has been said, a man is a huddle of need. What he was actually saying was something that was happening on the inside of him. He felt empty. He had what many desired in his day. He had money. He had fame. His name was known in the academic circles. And yet, on the inside, he was living a miserable life. You see, today, many cannot put their finger on why they live such miserable lives. Is there something that, is there something that, that we could pinpoint that, that, that the reason why we just don't feel like that we're gaining any traction? Now, let me be just very candid with you. Sometimes this year, it's hard to gain your spiritual traction, and, 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 and I'll get that. Sometimes just through the news media of ourselves, we can be mad and maybe not even know it. And I, I just want to tell you this. From this Thanksgiving week, are you ready? Even today, we still have things we can be thankful for. Now, you'll, you'll, You'll say, well, what is that, preacher? Well, just read my Facebook article. I'm not going to go through all that. You can read that yourself. And we listed some things that are to encourage any of you. But I can just tell you this. We are to be thankful this morning that we can still gather at church. You see, far too many of us have taken this building or this place way for granted. 
And, and, and can I tell you, it can be taken away. Something could happen. Something has happened to where we couldn't meet. And you know how miserable you feel inside when, when this whole thing is taken away from you? Can somebody amen that? When, when, when your body won't let you attend or circumstances won't let you attend, there's just something that misses in your life. Am I not right? Can I tell you these last few Sunday nights and Wednesday nights, there's just something that's not right. The puzzle just don't complete it. You see, some of you don't know this, but can I tell you, there's power in the place called church meeting. Christ even thought it was so important that he instituted the church. Now, I don't know about you, but I'm just thinking that if the church has his stamp of approval, then there's probably something to it. So, with all, with all that in mind, I want you to turn to a very, very, very interesting thought. And I come across this, and I just, I had to stop in my tracks, because something really arrested my attention, and I wanted to share it with you. The book of Ecclesiastes, or the, or... That book is commonly known as The Preacher. So naturally, a preacher would like a book called The Preacher. Some of you will get that when you go home today, but it's nevertheless true. All right. Ecclesiastes chapter 10, if you've got verse 8, look at it if you will. All right. He that diggeth a pit shall fall into it. And whoso breaketh an hedge, a serpent shall bite him. And whoso removeth stones shall be hurt therewith, and he that cleaveth wood shall be endangered thereby. If the iron be blunt, and we do not wet the edge, then must he put to more strength. But wisdom is profitable to direct, and surely the serpent will bite without enchantment. And a babbler is no better. Now here, and, and these things will be on the screen, here, the king is describing some dangerous situations. Now, look at some of the dangerous situations that this king is describing here. And I know what you're thinking. Uh, wait a minute. Are you at least sort of alert? Now, what has this got to do with you? Well, I'm going to get there. He talks about digging pits. Look at this. Breaking through a wall. Working with rocks. And chopping wood. Now, so what? Big whoopee do. and why do I even need to know that? Well, we understand here the king is talking about wisdom, and I'm not going to take this out of context, but he's also talking about living life on the edge. He speaks about a man digging pits, expecting someone else to fall into them, only he himself fall into them. Are you, are you with me? Now, he also talks about uh, uh, breaking through a wall. The king suggests that as we attempt to take something from someone, it's like taking advantage of them, and we get bitten in the process. Now, we understand that all of the rocks and walls and pits and wood, all of that, we understand, is talking about seeking wisdom. Now, can I just, can I just share something with you? And I talk about this all the time, but I want somebody to take special note to this. Now, are you ready for this? Now, watch. Here it is. The reason why it's important for you and I to come to church as often as we physically can, it's for this reason, is we also learn from one another. Now, uh, because we are people and we are prone to mistakes, I have learned a lot of things in my life not what to do by watching Carla. All right? That's just, she's a perfect role model of what not to do in life. So, see, we have models here in, in, in our church so we can see when, when they make a mistake, you may not say it out loud, but here's what you're thinking. I, I don't want to do that. I, I, I don't want any part of that. So, but can I tell you this? The reverse is true. When somebody is going through something and, and they've made a decision and they've been blessed for that decision, the contra we, we think of this. Man, if, if they can do that, come on with me, play with me. 
then I can do that. So, see, we come together as a church and we, we learn from one another. And in this passage, Solomon is teaching us some valuable lessons. And the lesson, one of these lessons, is you're going to learn in a dramatic way here this morning. Now, Brother Chris, there's a quote that someone said that I want you to see on the, on the screen. And I think it's important for all of us to, to, to know, you know this, but I want to go ahead and put it on the screen. Don't think about seeking counsel after you're in the ditch. Why don't you seek counsel before you fall into it? Now, do you understand what I'm talking about? As a pastor, everybody look, everybody look, everybody look. I want everybody, look. it's not time to pray. Come on, everybody. It's not time to pray. I want everybody to look at me this morning. Watch. As a pastor, here's what I've experienced. You come to the office after you're in the ditch. Listen. If you're headed to the ditch, let me just give you some counsel. If you're headed to the ditch, it may be a good place in your life is to stop. Come on with me. Play with me. Come on. It may be a good opportunity for you to say this. I need to stop because the consequences of going forward may not be good if I don't realize something soon. Now, I can apply that to you financially. Some of you are going to spend yourself into oblivion this holiday season. And then when January and February comes around, here's what you're going to say. I wished. I wished I hadn't have done that. Now, it's not just, it's not just your financial decisions. What about health decisions? You see, you're going to, you're going to, you're going to do some things in these next couple of weeks. And that's not good for your physical well-being. But here's what you're determined already. Well, I'm going to do it, and so I just don't care. So you can blabber all you want to preach. I'm just not going to listen to you. Okay, I'm just going to tell you. Here's what I've learned from you. As a pastor, I've watched some of you destroy your health, and I have determined that I don't want to go down that same road. I've watched you. You have taught me, don't do some of those things. Now, you think that that's harsh. No, that's before I get to the pit... I want to stop and say, wait a minute. If I continue this pattern of behavior, is this going to be, watch, watch, is this going to benefit my Savior? Come on. If I continue doing what I'm doing now, is this going to benefit the Savior and is it going to make Jesus look good out in our community? When I preach, I never thought about that. Well, let's think about it. Because let me tell you, every action has a reaction. And what you do at work does have make a difference. What you do at home does make a difference. So I'm just telling you, before you fall off in the pit, and before you come up to the church want me, wanting me to fix all of your problems, why don't you take a big look before you get there? And start thinking this. Now, wait a minute. Let me back up and examine this and really see if I need to continue going this direction. Amen? Listen, while you can make course corrections, you need to make course corrections. All right? Now, I'm just, I, look, all of that's free stuff. That's not even in my notes. So you just got that for absolute, positively free, so you're to be grateful for that. Didn't even pay for that this morning. You're a tough bunch this morning. I get it, so... Brother Jeff, thank you for my prop this morning. They need it. I can guarantee you. Brother Randy, they need this prop this morning. Now, I want to focus on something because it just jumped off the page. I want you to look at Ecclesiastes 10.10, and I want to show you something. I just want to show you this. Ecclesiastes 10.10. Maybe I've never seen it or maybe I've read it too quick, but here's the point I want to make. If the iron be blunt, and he do not wet the edge, now look at this, he must, watch, then must he put to, what are those two words? All right? I want you to see something. When I come to that in, in the text as I was reading that, here's what, here's, here's what I was thinking. More strength, look, look, look. look. I'm not making this up. Are you ready for this? Did you realize what that word more strength means? Let me give it to you. I'll just break it down. I'm not funny like Jonathan with these witty pictures that he gives you. So you're just going to have to, 
You're just going to have to mentally get this. That word more strength literally means more resources. And as you get deeper in the woods of this definition, you know what another definition I found that that means? I'm not making this up. It literally means an army. Here's what I'm telling you. In this day and time, who in their right mind can find more strength? You are already at, 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 at the edge right now. You are, Listen, you wake up tired, you eat lunch tired, and you go to bed tired. And now you're telling me, preacher, that somewhere in my day I've got to find more strength. You are absolutely crazy. I don't even have enough strength to get up of a morning. Come on, let, 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 let me hear an amen on that. I don't even have enough strength hardly to keep my head up through the day. And now you're telling me that somewhere along my day, I've got to find more strength or I've got to find an army. Now, where am I going to find that? I can't even manage my own affairs. And now we're telling we've got to find an army or more strength or more resources. That's just crazy, preacher. That is absolutely crazy. Well, let me just tell you how this is going to play out for you this morning. Because when I when I, when I got there, I knew there had to be a solution. Now, I understand this. Some of us in this room, you're working as hard as you can. Now watch. And you're putting in as many hours as you can. And at the end of the day, and I'm firmly convinced of this, at the end of the day, you are absolutely bone dog tired. Can anybody say amen? You know what I'm talking about. Have you ever thought to yourself, my get up and go has got up and went? You ever thought about that? So what is the bottom line to all this? Let's just cut to the chase. Let's quit this blabbling. Let's just get on to, the, to where we need to get to. What's, 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 what's the deal with this? Here's what. Look at this verse one more time. If the iron be blunt, watch this. You're going to have to wet the edge. All right. Now. I told you don't sleep this morning. Because I'm awake, and so it makes me a little different if I have to give you a gentle reminder this morning with this. All right? Um, we can clean up the mess after service, so I'm just telling you now. Now, go back to verse 10, Brother Chris, right quick. Let me show you this. Please ask these 10, 10. Here's what we got to do. Now, I asked Jeff Carpenter if, if, if he'd bring me this, because I knew this. If anybody in the church has an axe, it would be somebody that probably needs an axe. Right? So I knew he'd have one. So he, he, he brought it to me this morning. He's walking into the church with an axe, and he kind of thought, why am I walking into a church with an axe? I feel rather ridiculous doing this. But there is a point to all this. Now, by the way, have you ever used this instrument in clearing any type of land or removing any obstacle? Has anybody ever done that? Here's what soon you have found out about it. In order to make your job easier, you know what you found out? That this axe head has to be sharp. But here's the contrary of that. If it's not sharp, here's what you found out. You can work all day long and not achieve much. Is anybody getting this? Now, guess where the spiritual application is? You see, spiritually, the reason why you are having more difficult moments in your life is because somewhere, somehow, you have forgotten to wet the edge. Somehow, somewhere, you've just slipped off. Somehow, it's not important for you to keep your axe sharp. And so the next time you need to read your Bible or the next time you need to enter into God's presence in prayer, you feel nothing. You sense nothing. You don't even know if God's there. Why? It's because you have forgotten to wet the edge spiritually. You see, the only, watch, the only time spiritually a lot of Christians ever need their Bible or ever need God in prayer is when they get into a ditch. Right? Just makes perfect sense. And so here's what's happened. You Christians that have learned to wet the edge and every day you keep this edge as sharp as you possibly can, 
There is not a moment in your day that you cannot go to God in prayer and you know that there, God can't answer that prayer. You see, when you've already, with a dull axe, and you pray, here's what you've already determined. I just don't think that does much good. I, I, I'm, I'm just not getting anything out of this. And here's the thing that I've often heard as a preacher, and I don't understand it. Well, preacher, I know, I know you guys always say this, and you're probably paid big money to say this, but I know I ought to read the Bible, but I just don't get nothing out of it. Well, let me tell you how you get something out of it. Wet the edge. Keep your axe sharp. You see, if, if, if I'm praying every day, if I'm reading every day, and if I'm close to God every day, I'm going to tell you the axe stays sharp. But if I fall into a ditch, watch, if I fall into a ditch spiritually, I'm going to tell you somewhere in your life you let your axe get dull. Somewhere I'm going to tell you, and I'm going to point it out to you, that somehow you are not sharp spiritually. Now, listen to me, listen to me, listen to me. That's not a hundred percent of the case, but it's most of the cases. I can tell you that even sharp Christians go through difficult times. I hate to even say this, but even sharp Christians can get coronavirus. I get that. I understand that. But I'm going to tell you this. Let's make some applications. Look what it says. If the iron be blunt and you do not wet the edge, you're going to have to find more strength. The reason why we're tired today is because we're dull spiritually and it affects our physical health. Everybody listen to me. When we are dull spiritually, it can affect your spiritual health. Because let me just tell you this. At the end of the day, you're dull spiritually. You don't feel like praying. When you're, dull, when, you're, when you're physically wore out, you can't find no strength. You're not going to pick up the Bible and read the book of Leviticus. You're just not going to do that. You, you, you just, there are some things that hinder you. I wonder this morning, watch. I wonder this morning how much time we spent on a given week of keeping our axe sharp. By the way, this represents your life if, 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 if you don't know that. Let me show you something to contrast between what King Solomon was writing and what someone else told us in 2 Kings. Brother Chris, I think it's that next. Uh, 2 Kings 6, 2. Let's look here. Let me give you some differences so that you can see what I'm talking about. Somebody at least, amen. I need to know if you're alive this morning. Come on with me. Watch. Let us go, we pray thee, unto Jordan, and take thence every man a beam, and let us make us a place there where we may dwell. Nothing wrong with that. And he answered, Go ye. Now look at verse number 3. And one says, Be content, I pray thee, and go with thy servants. And he answered, Somebody tell me what he answered. I will go. Look at verse 4. And so he went with them, and when he came to Jordan, they cut down wood. So, look at verse 5. But as one was fell in a beam, uh-oh, the axe head, somebody tell me, what's that next word? The axe head fell into the water. And he cried and said, Alas, Master, for it was borrowed. Look at verse 6. And the man of God says, Where fell it? And he showed him the place. And he cut down a stick and cast it into thither, and the iron did swim. Now, th that's kind of an amazing story. But look at verse number 7. Therefore he said, take it up and put it on the hand, and he took it. So, let me show you something that, that occurred to me as I was reading these two accounts. Here is one axe head that was sharp. Now look here, in 2 Kings chapter 6... We know it was sharp because the Bible says he was felling a beam. The axe head was sharp, and we, we know this. This young man who was using this axe, uh, this sharpened axe, realized his power was gone. Everybody, please get this. Everybody, please get this. Watch. Everybody look up here. Everybody look up here. I, won't give you, I don't want you to miss this. 
as this guy was chopping wood, the axe head fell off and he realized that he had no power. Can, you, can, can I tell you something this morning? Our power comes from the Holy Spirit. And did you realize in our spiritual life that we can quench the Holy Spirit? We can quench him, quench it when we sin willfully. When we don't take advantage of God's precious resources like going to him in daily prayer and conversation. Not going to him in our baby Bible daily reading. We can quench the spirit when we, when we have sin in our heart, when we hate one another, when we don't do those spiritual disciplines. But here we see this young man, watch this, the axe head fell off. He knew that he lost his power. Here is my point. Did you realize there's a lot of Christians that will go to church and come in and realize they don't even, they're not even as sharp spiritually as they used to be? They lost their axe head somewhere along the way. They don't even know. Remember what Samson happened to Samson? He wist not that the power of God departed from him. He woke up that day, didn't even know his hair was cut. They came and jabbed out his eyes, but he woke up that day like, like any other day thinking that he was okay. Can I tell you this? Sometimes we wake up every day just like we're okay, and we know, we know, we know we're not as sharp spiritually as we used to be. There was something that came into our lives. Maybe it was an event. Maybe somebody told you something. Somebody at the church said something. You took it the wrong way. And ever since that particular occasion, you've just never been sharp. You've never had your cutting edge. You've never got involved in church again. Maybe, maybe you fought with a loved one. Maybe you fought at school. Maybe your life is just crazy topsy-turvy right now. But you know, you know, you know you're not sharp. Why is that? Well, let's talk about that just for a minute before we close. Sometimes we, we want to make sure. Now watch this. We want to make sure that we are sharp. Whether God is sharp or not. You know what I mean by that? We want to make us look good. We spend an inordinate amount of time making us look good. You see, we want to look good in everything we do. So here's how we do it. We come into church. We want everybody to know that we're here. All right? You're here. Thank God for you. And I love you and I pray for you. I pray for your family in, in my devotions. And I'm grateful. You, you, you just don't know. But can I tell you this? What if we came in here, watch, like our insides really are? What if people could see the inside of us instead of just the outside of us? Boy, if that was the case, boy, that would be kind of embarrassing, wouldn't it? What if people could see that? You see, we only give people a glimpse of what we want them to see. We don't want them to see our failures. We don't want them to see how, how, how we conduct ourselves through the week. We just want you to get a glimpse of us on Sundays and feel good about ourselves. But the Holy Spirit inside of us is saying, that's not how I operate. I want you to feel good about Jesus and not you just to feel good about yourself. You see, if, if we had the right mindset of who Christ was, we would enter into this relationship called Christianity just a little bit different. Now, let me show you something. Are, are you ready to wind down? No, I'm not going to even ask that. The dull axe people seldom look to see the Lord working behind the scenes to get them through some difficult places. Let me just tell you something that you need to know this morning. Even when you don't sense God's working in your life, He is working in your life. Amen. Somebody needs that. The dull axe people easily lose their edge when confronted with obstacles that's too big for them. I'm firmly convinced, Pop, with this. I believe that God gives us big obstacles so that we will come to Him. I firmly believe that. I firmly believe there are things that come into us and to us that God knows it's too big for you to handle, but He's just waiting on you to ask Daddy for help. Amen. You see, the sharp axe people have learned something, and I want you to see this. 
If you don't get anything else as we're fixing to wind down, I want you to notice 2 Kings 6, 6. 2 Kings 6, 6. This is how you are to approach your spiritual life this morning. Amen me when you're ready. And when you see this. This guy says, My axe head fell off, prophet, preacher. I'm not a sharp spiritually preacher, and I don't know what's I don't know what's going on. And and so the preacher I'm giving you the background. So the preacher starts asking this young man some questions, and watch this. And the man of God asked that young man this important question. What's the question? Three words. Where did you lose your axe head? Or, if you come to me and you're not as sharp spiritually, here's what I'm going to ask you. When did you first start noticing that you're not as sharp spiritually as you used to be? Look what, the man, look what this young man said. Well, preacher... I think it was in this place that I lost my spiritual power. And that young man pointed to the place. He knew the place where he lost his power. Let me ask you this. Do you know the place where you lost your spiritual power? Can you pinpoint that one place where you used to be on fire for God? Where you used to have a zeal for God. When giving to God was an encouragement. When doing things for God was just an overflow of your life. Let me ask you this. If you've lost it, can you pinpoint where you lost it? But preacher, there was a month ago when I came to church and somebody just said something so ugly to me and I just can't get over that. Then you've lost your sharpened edge. You've lost it. Well, preacher, at work... There's just this one guy that really gets under my skin and you just don't know how it is. And he, he pressures me and he pressures me and he talks to me and he talks to me. And I just, for some reason, I have just gotten a dirty language because of that. I've just acted out in haste and, this, and these words just come out of my mouth. Let me do something better for that. Preacher. At home. I'm not a very nice person. Those that I love, I take it out on. Watch, watch, watch. And slowly but surely, preacher, I just drain other people's spiritual life. It happens. By the way, before you sleep, it happens. This guy in Acts 6, uh, excuse me, 2 Kings 6, I like him because he knew the very place he lost his spiritual power. He knew the very place where he messed up. I would just venture to say, there may be somebody in this room that knows, that knows where you've messed up. And see, what's happened is, because you've lost your spiritual power, your cutting edge, you try to mask that with other things. Well, I'm not as sharp spiritually as I used to be, so I need to go out and buy. I'm not as sharp spiritually as I used to be, so I need new friends. I'm not as sharp spiritually as I used to be, so I don't need to attend church. Come on, come on. Does somebody know what I'm talking about? So instead of getting close to God, you start trying to mask that with other things. Instead of pointing to the place where you lost your spiritual edge. Now, we told you a while ago about this. Over in Ecclesiastes, King Solomon wrote to us, If you don't wet the edge, you got to work harder. Some of you in this room are working harder at your Christianity because... You're not as sharp as you used to be. I'm telling you. Listen. You, you may discount this and that's fine. But when you start missing out on God. When you start doing those things that you know that's not right. Listen. You're not going to go to hell if you don't read your Bible. 
You're not going to go to hell if you don't pray. You're just going to feel like it. You just are not sharp. And you know it. And by the way, before I grab the edge of this, this is sharp. I better be careful about that. Second Kings, this young man knew where he lost it. Over in Ecclesiastes, he was wondering, how come i got to work so much harder to achieve the same results? Why? Put an edge on your Christianity. Get a little bit more sharper. How do you do that? You just get as close to Jesus as humanly possible. That's how you get it done. All right. Can I read you one last illustration and then we're done? found this, and I loved it, and I thought it would be appropriate to end this morning with this. An Indian brave found an egg that had been laid by an eagle. Not being able to return the egg to the eagle's nest, the next best thing was to do and place it in the nest of a prairie chicken. The hen sit, sit on the eagle's egg and along with her own, knowing nothing of the eagle inside. The little eaglet was hatched alongside the prairie chickens. All his life, the eagle thought he was a prairie chicken, and he did what prairie chickens do. He scratched in the dirt for seeds and insects so he could eat. He would fly in brief spells with a thrashing of wings, but he never got off the ground more than a few feet. Years passed, and the eagle grew very old. One day he saw a a magnificent bird far above him in the sky. Hanging with graceful, graceful majesty on the powerful currents, that bird seemed to soar. What a beautiful bird, said the eagle to his neighbor. What is it? That's an eagle, the chief of birds, the neighbor said. But don't give it a second thought. You can never be like him. So the eagle never gave it another thought. And he died thinking he was a chicken. Guess what? You were born for more than what you're achieving. How do I know that? It's because Jesus Christ died on the cross. And he poured out his blood to do more for you than you are giving him opportunity to do. Some of you are a prairie chicken. And you are made for it to soar like an eagle. I just wonder. I just wonder how much longer are you going to be pecking in the dirt when you can soar on high? Are you sharp? Have you lost your cutting edge? Do you know that you're saved and on your way to heaven? You that are listening to Facebook Live this morning, let me direct you for a moment. Do you know that you know that you know that your name's written in the Lamb Book of Life. Have you ever come to the conclusion that you need a Savior and His name is Jesus? He died for you and gave His life for you. And that the same applies for you. Are you sharp? Have you lost your cutting edge this morning? In about time that you found it again. Father, we thank You, Lord, for the opportunity we've had Lord, we ask that only you do what you can do this morning. Father, bring us to the place to where we can be satisfied with you once again and not our own human efforts. This morning, Lord, we need an outpouring of the Holy Spirit on our church, on our nation. Father, I pray if there's somebody in here in this room that just feels like the rug has been jerked out from underneath them lately. If they're just going through the motions just to try to make others happy instead of them being happy. Father, I pray that you would convict them in such a way that they would just come to you and say, I know that I've lost it and I need to reclaim it. Father, this is the day that the Lord hath made. Father, we can do something about it if we just would. 
We can get back to power. We can get back to sharpness. We can leave this place better than we walked in. But only you, dear Lord, can make that possible. We give you our hearts and give you an opportunity. Would you stand all over the building? As God so leads, would you come? Just give God the opportunity to work in your life.